Well, God bless you beautiful people on YouTube and on Facebook and to the whole wide world. Would you pray with me this morning? My God, Jesus asked his disciples, you can go scripture and you can quote me. He said, would you just pray with me? I'm going to go up to the mountaintop and pray. And Jesus Christ was up there and he must have prayed an hour because he came back down. And he said, couldn't you just pray with me for just one hour? They would sleep. Are you sleep? Or will you pray with me today? And pray over your family while I'm praying, if that make any sense. You know, you haven't prayed in a long time. I'm not talking about over the fat steak and potatoes and cornbread and piece of peach cobbler and a fago pop. My God, I'm not talking about that prayer. I'm talking about when your mama got hit by a car, when your mama was diagnosed with cancer, when your daughter got hit by a car, when your son got shot. Them type of prayers where... You, you can't hardly pray because you, you're so shocked or what didn't happen. I'm talking about that kind of prayer. Uh, the Bible talks about David had killed the lion and the bear. You're fighting with some lions and bears right now. It's a big struggle, and you can't hardly handle it. But let me tell you about the giants that's coming. Your loved ones. Your body might get diagnosed with something. That's why it's so important that you get a relationship with Jesus Christ, God himself, if that make any sense. On this Loving Tuesday, we're going to love somebody to death today. You ever love somebody to death where you come in and you know they don't like you? And you come in, hey, I got coffee for everybody today. And then you pick out this, hey, George, you want coffee? I don't know. I don't, want, I don't do no coffee. Everything you do is not happy. You bought cupcakes here for everybody. I don't eat I don't eat sugar. I don't eat cupcakes. I've been there before. I've been there before. And I told y'all before, I've been there before where I've changed prejudice. I've seen people that was atheists change after they know you and you put in a good light. The Bible said that we are light to life. Excuse me a moment. I love that song. It's so important that we pray. So let me pray for you all this morning, if it's okay with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask in you right now to bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice. If you're listening to me today, just believe that God is going to help your situation. As long as we understand how God operates, he don't think the way we think. He, could, he says it's in his word. Your thoughts is not my thoughts and your ways is not my ways. So I know in a lot of situations, to, to the viewers that's out there that's listening to me, that you may want God to fix your situation, whatever the situation may be, a lost job, lost your home, rebuild your vehicle, husband cheated, wife walked out, dog won't bark, whatever the situation is, God, and I know, I know, we want the situation to change, and I know the way you are, God, you want the situation to change us. So we ask in you right now, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless my audience, bless my church, bless my business, bless my co-workers, bless my friends, and also bless my enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. If you pray with me and you are sincere, you're going to have a beautiful day. Matter of fact, you're going to have a beautiful week. You're going to have a beautiful month. You'll have a beautiful year if you keep putting Jesus Christ in front. According to Matthew 6.33, you, you'll never have to worry about no desires. So today we're going to talk about something really, really important. And God was dealing with me last night about it. And he was saying, let the people know you're wonderful made the way you are. And I'm not on here, believe me, I'm just a message. I'm not in here to bash the ladies with their eyelashes, the ladies with their long hair, the ladies with their nails, uh, the ladies with getting their feet done. I'm not tripping. But there's so many ladies that's getting it done that you can afford it. Think about the sisters that can't. And that's the area I want to go. Everything that you're doing, just imagine if you could not do it. Let me say that again. Everything that you're doing, imagine that you could not do it. You couldn't get your hair done. You didn't have your car. You had to catch the bus. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, 
you was on WIC, you was on Section 8, all the stuff that you are doing, imagine you couldn't do it. You couldn't buy the $80 eyelashes. Come on. You couldn't buy the $215 hair. Come on. You have to go to Dollar General and get that $5 perm and get in that in that mirror. Mama, turn them greens off, Mama. I'm, I'm doing my hair. Can you do that for me? Come on. Uh, that, that's the area I came from. You know, young women was cooking, learning how to get ready for their husband. And here's the thing. It'd be great if you'd be rich. I'm going to just bounce around. Just stay with me. It'd be great if you're rich and you could tell your maid to cook for you and your husband. But, baby, that's a possibility that's not going to happen. So you need to go in there and know how to make some biscuits. Pop them nails off. I don't know what you got to do because that man want to smell some fried chicken, some mashed potatoes. Come on, old peach cobbler in the oven. You know, and I know, I know. Well, hey, I don't do no cooking. I ain't going to cook. Well, you probably never be a good wife because you need to cook something. Because if you have babies, you may not be able to afford to go out. And you're going to have to look in that refrigerator. You're going to have to get in that cab and get some Kool-Aid so you have something to drink. They got a few cookies in there. You got to look at that, that refrigerator and, and, and whoop up a meal. Come on. That's what time it is. If you want to talk real, that's what time it is. So we're talking about uh, uh, don't worry about if you can't have any extra stuff because God have perfectly made you. And that's the point I want to get off. And it, and, it, and it says that God made you to love you. And it hurts God's feeling when we do us. In other words, you change your nose. God gave you that nose. Why would you tell him, I don't like that nose? That same nose may not breathe. Look at Michael Jackson, how he did his face. Disfigured his, was a good looking young man. He disfigured his face. No disrespect to his family or, or him. I'm just a messenger. But he, you watch, I watched him as a young man, good looking young man, talented, and his mind was gone. Come on. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So we have to be so careful. And I was telling the um, audience before about a young lady about six years ago. She thought she was ugly. And I'm looking right at her. I mean, I had to actually tell her, let's meet. Because she was so hurt about how not good looking she was, suicidal. Because somebody had planted in her in her spirit when she was a young girl, her parents, that she was ugly. And she growed up like that. So just to keep it real on today, we call this loving Tuesday. Love on somebody today and let yourself know. Go in the mirror and look at yourself and say, you know what? I am good looking. Talk to yourself. Encourage your own self. God made you perfect. Nobody have your eyes. Nobody have your nose. Nobody have your funny looking ears. Come on. Them your funny looking ears. If that make any sense. Learn to love what God have gave you. And be content. And God will take you to another level. I love you guys. You guys be blessed on this loving Tuesday. Love on somebody. God bless you.